What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here and today we got a Scotch Gambit deep dive. We're looking at some lines and variations just a little bit more in depth so you guys can become Scotch Gambit Jedi Masters. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Scotch Gambit E4, E5, Knight F3, and Knight to C6. So I like the Scotch Gambit because it throws people off a lot of times. And uh, sometimes they just don't know what to do, especially uh, in the lower levels or if you're coming up through the ranks. A lot of times they just haven't prepped for it. And if you're prepped for it, you have a huge advantage. So a lot of times they think you're going to go Roy Lopez or even Bishop C4 in like a Italian game kind of fashion. But instead, we're actually going to hit him with D4. Gary Kasparov used to love this with uh, pawn takes. This is the Scotch game. But the Scotch gambit is when you gambit that pawn, Bishop C4. And Bishop C4, what it's about is we're going to gambit a pawn for rapid development. And you just want to develop very fast and have attacking chances and etc. So after Bishop to C4, you have a few moves here. D6, which if they go, let's look at it briefly. If they go D6, you can go into a, a, a literally like a main line. Uh, Philidor, which is knight takes, and then there's knight f6, knight to c3, bishop e7. You can follow up with bishop f4, which this is an interesting line. If bishop f4, there's castles. I like to do queen d2 Some in some cases. Honestly, the bishop is misplaced here because the line usually was, is with the bishop on f1. But what I like to do is actually queen to d2, and then I castle queen side. I play f3 and g4. Or I will like to do knight e2 first and then swing, um, swing the knight around in this fashion to play f5. But honestly, the pawn's hanging, so we have to play queen to d2 or castles. Queen d3 is a move too. So you can't play in this manner. It, all, it really depends on who you're playing. Another line that I've, that I've used before is knight takes c6, pawn takes, and bishop f4. Bishop f4, and then you're going to castle king side in this, in this manner. Castle castle uh, i think it's rook b8 and then you can play b3 or bishop b3 rook b1 works just as fine and then queen to e2 and rook d1 so i'm not even sure what black does here maybe rook e8 there's not a lot of moves for black here maybe bishop b7 probably trying to play d5 queen to e2 and then you can play rook to d1 rook d1's coming with just a pin now honestly you just have more space and if you have more space you can do more things more flexibility rook d1 rook d1 is coming with almost tempo because of e5 if d5, I think you can just still go rook d1 anyway and put some increasing pressure onto this pawn. It's just going to be kind of annoying. This bishop is actually really bad right here. So I never really get this position, honestly. It doesn't happen as much as you think. But if it does happen, at least you'll know what to do here. You can just go into a philidor. There's also a line that if they play bishop e7, knight c3, knight f6, I just castle here. No bishop f4. This is the modern or main line of philidor stuff. After castles, you can play rook e1. The idea is to put the bishop onto f1. And, and maybe even play g3 and bishop to g2. You're going to slow ball it here. Slow ball it kind of stuff. Okay. Coming back to it, though. So uh, let's look at some more lines. Pawn takes bishop c4. D6, just not as played as much. You do have bishop c5, which is sometimes a test to the scotch gambit in certain ways. Uh, knight f6, bishop b4 check, and is there anything else? h6. Let's go over this. This one's weird. h6, I've had this before. There's two ways to play it. You can either just castle or three ways. You can castle, you can take the pawn, or you can play c3. I've played all of them. What I like the most is the c3 one because uh, I'm, I'm gambiting another pawn. And then after they take it, I castle. And then they... They take this one and then I've gambled it two pawns because I've taken this one. Temporarily three pawns, but then I'll take it and now it's only two. In this position right here, you'd be surprised. You're down two pawns, but one wrong move from black and it's over. This is, I mean, how do they develop the king side? We're aiming this way. Knight f6 runs into an immediate e5 and they're in a lot of trouble here. A lot of trouble. And they, they just can't untangle. They can't untangle. And it's, it's a problem. It's, it's literally a problem for black here. So I, I re highly recommend that, uh, this, the pawn sack line. That's a pretty fun line, to be honest. But after, uh, you could also castle here too, which is pretty common. Knight of six, actually, that's probably no good. Maybe, I don't know. E5, though, uh, i just never seen this one. But E5, D5, Bishop, B5. This is the usual stuff in the main line, Scotch Gambit. And once they move the knight, you can play knight takes D4. And it's literally, honestly, uh, just an insertion of H6. Uh, here, but I think that does matter a lot because usually there's a different move bishop d7 or bishop c5 or the castle by now h6 just is never a good move guys and you should just understand that you have a few ways to play I highly recommend the pawn sack line because if they don't take it well then you got two pawns in the center here and this is pretty nice bishop g4 is usually answered with queen b3 because you're hitting this and this throws them off a lot throws them off then I can follow up with bishop e3 so if they defend oh they can't defend both actually so queen d7 do I take this I wonder if I could, oops, I wonder if I can take on b7, rook b8, queen a6, this is hanging, bishop b5, 
So what do I do? Maybe bishop e3 though. Let me see what the engine likes. Uh, oh wow, that's sweet. It's plus three almost after bishop takes, queen takes, and then take on b7. That's nice. We all learned something. We just learned something ourselves here. That was pretty sweet, man. That Scotch hammer is something deadly. I'm telling you. So h6, okay. H6 is no good. No good anyway, right? So bishop c4. After bishop c4, you have uh, bishop b4. This is another like weird kind of sideline thing. Bishop, if bishop b4, we go c3, which I've showed this before in a previous video. So check that out when you get a chance. But c3, pawn takes and pawn takes. Now. With that being said, they have a few moves here. Bishop c5, bishop a5, bishop b7. Let's cover the worst. Bishop b7 is the worst because immediately loses. Can you find a move? I think we did this in another video too. But can you find a move that wins on the spot for white? Queen to d5, start a new one, hitting the f7 pawn. Checkmate is coming. It's imminent. If you do not do anything about it, black has to play knight h6. After knight h6, thank you very much. Removing the defender. Get that out of here. Get him out of here. And now it's going to be made on f7. You have rook f8 or castles. I mean, either way, it doesn't matter. We're just castle. Move this bishop out of the way. You could capture here, but I'm just not a fan. Not in this line. There's another line that you actually have to capture here to stop black's counterplay. But bishop goes back to e3, and I just convert this advantage. I'm up a full piece. I should be able to convert this, and you should be able to convert this in the end. All right. Uh, now we have bishop to c5. Bishop c5 is answered with bishop takes f7. The reason why queen d5 doesn't work, guys, doesn't work, because I've had a lot of students do this one before, is because he just goes queen e7. And now everything's defended and you have nothing to do. You have nothing to attack anymore. It's not the same and it's going to be a little bit harder for you to do stuff. So after bishop c5, you just take on f7. King takes and then queen d5. King e8, queen takes c5. Very simple here. Now, in queen trades, I'm not a big fan of queen trades in the Scotch Gambit. There's one line I'm going to show you in particular that you do have to do your homework on because if they play this on you, you will be getting into very drawn-like positions, especially if they're lower rated. You, that's just probably not the best way to go, and it's not as fun to play, but it definitely can happen. I've even checked the database. I've checked the database with millions of games in it, and uh, it's just not a good record for white for winning but for drawing i mean it's like it's, it's you have to almost get a draw almost every time if you play it a certain way there's two ways to play it and i'll show you both ways in a minute but after here queen e7 if queen e7 i'm just going to get out of the way or queen e3 i like to defend this in castle if they play knight f6 i wonder if i could just castle honestly e5 is a move knight d2 i've done all of these before knight d2 i like before uh, knight d2 i like a lot because a4 and bishop a3 it's gonna be my plan uh, most likely so but that is that line there and then you have another one this is the the one that i don't get a lot but when i do i'm happy to see it because they're getting a lot of trouble here bishop a5 i just castle first okay they go d6 it's like automatic queen to b3 queen to b3 i'm hitting f7 you either have queen e7 or queen f6 sometimes they just don't want to go here because the knight usually goes here so they'll go queen e7 after queen e7, I have showed you guys this in another video in the Scotch Gambit playlist. Make sure you check out that playlist, big fella. We in here. Now after queen e7, e5. After e5, you have knight takes and pawn takes. Oops, sorry. So after knight takes, this immediately loses a piece. Loose pieces lose games. I tell my students this all the time. If knight takes, then queen takes and f7's hanging. But if pawn takes, then of course queen a4 or queen b5. Start a new one. Thank you so much. So that's just not a move there. But th this move right here really blows up black's position. After pawn takes, there's bishop a3, queen f6, knight d2, 97, 94. And it's getting crazy now. Like, what in the world? Look at all my pieces ready to go. He can't castle yet. He in a lot of trouble here, guys. Queen g6, just because just because we're on this video, I'll show you again. But if you didn't watch the other video, um, then you'll see it for the first time here. Bishop takes e7 is the best move. And after knight takes, because they want to steal castle, you got this beautiful move, knight takes e5. I'm hanging a piece. And you actually have to take it, because I have three on f7 now. So after queen takes e4, now what would you do? Would you take this pawn? Would you take this pawn? If you said yes you're wrong it's actually bishop b5 check bishop b5 check we have to open up the line for the queen the queen needs to get involved if king d8 of course mate in one that's gross and then after uh, c6 you have queen takes f7 king here either rook comes to d1 this is more precise because it's the last piece and check and then knight to d5 is the usual bishop takes c6 whoa lean back matrix move dodging bullets sweet move bishop takes c6 monstrous move here and everything falls his position collapses as knight the knight is hanging 
and um, if he takes the pawn, if he takes the bishop, then it's mate with the knight. Beautiful checkmate here. And this is in the bishop a5 line. Anyone, any time that I see this line, I'm automatically like, oh man, you in some trouble. You in some trouble, big fella. Whoa, don't do this to yourself. You in a lot of trouble. So bishop b4 check. It's just not uh, not the best move, honestly. You have knight f6 and bishop c5 being the best moves. Now again, let's look at this bishop b7 one. Now we just briefly looked at what happens if he goes bishop b4, and then we push c3, and then he goes back to e7. So this is the one where if he goes bishop b7 just one time, then you play c3 anyway. And if he captures, then of course you do fall back into the trap again. That queen d5, if you answer that correctly, good job. Queen d5 is the move. After knight h6, it's the same kind of thing, but the difference is there's a black pawn here about to capture on b2. So after he castles, well, what would you do here, folks? White to move. The move here is actually bishop to c1. I'm kidding. <laughs> bishop c1, if that's what you thought it was, then you were, you were just wrong, sorry. But bishop takes g7 is the best move here. Bishop c1, why is it wrong? Well, let's check it out. Bishop c5, knight to b4. I'm hitting the queen. The queen is attacked. I'm also attacking c2. So how do you defend both squares at the exact same time? There's only one move to do it. I mean, unless you want to just lose on the spot, then you might as well just resign. But queen to d1 is actually defending the square. But the problem is that I just get my piece back, and it's a wrap. Like, that's it. Queen e2 takes, takes. And if we look at this, we actually down a pawn, I think, still. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're down a pawn. Not much compensation, to be honest. And we still have in castle. This is not the Scotch Gambit we wanted to play. So coming back to the position, it's actually Bishop takes G7. If he takes on B2, which I've had some students ask, what if they take on B2? You just come back. Long range sniper here and lights out. Lights out. So he's forced to take it. Then Knight takes C3. And now we have a beautiful position here for, for White. White can castle either way. Now I'll show you ideas here, what I usually like to do. After D6, they're usually going Bishop to E6. This is just standard. They want to get the rest of the pieces out. King's a little bit unsafe here. It, it, not a little. It's just unsafe, right? This doesn't look good here. Now, um, the engine likes bringing the queen back. What I like to do is more of a human fashion here. You can castle queen side, but I like to scare them and play queen H5. If you, and the reason why I say scare is because usually sometimes a queen could just be chilling over there. And the reason, like, it's just very scary to have a queen in your face like this. And you don't even know what's going on yet. It's just a queen in your face. So you know how that is. Queen h5. It's very easy to make mistakes here. Uh, bishop e6 could be a move. I haven't seen it too much because sometimes they just don't want to make this happen and trade more pieces. But my idea, my idea, let's just say, like, I don't know, rook b8 or a6. Make a move here. Rook b8, a6, or even bishop d7. Let's try that one. Bishop d7, my goal is to play h4. Followed by knight to g5, so I can attack f7 and h5. And then in some cases, castle queen side, rook lift to d3, and all the way over to g3 to mate the king. So this is the idea here. You have to have ideas more than moves. You want to have moves too, but the ideas are even better. So that's my idea in that opening, in that part of the opening there. So that's the Scotch Gambit with bishop to e7. Now let's look at the final ones, which is knight f6 and bishop c5. Let's start with bishop c5 because it's still one of the uncommon ones. But if bishop c5 happens, you got a few ways to go. Um, now, castles was one way, which I'm, I'm, I'm still looking at, but I know there's some there's some stuff in there that I didn't like. I have a lot of Scotch Gambit theory. I have a lot of Sc Scotch Gambit theoretical knowledge. And the castle ones are very, very sharp to the point where, like, I actually lost a few games with white. And of course, it's training games. But it was just I didn't like them. And my position was kind of weird. I ended up with double pawns, even though my king was here. Even though the theory said I was supposed to, it's just harder to play as a human for white in those lines. And now you do have c3, which is the standard here. c3 is, a, is the standard move where black has a few moves. If they capture, of course, we just go back into what we've done before. Queen to d5, pretty simple. King e8, queen takes c5. The engine actually likes this. Engine did this one before, queen h5. I like this engine move. It's just a nice uh, insertion of a move here. If g6, then it weakens this diagonal. So, of course, if they take it, then, then this is automatic. So, that's pretty cool. That's an engine analysis there. Uh, and after queen takes, queen e7, uh, even I like taking on c3, sacrificing this pawn. After queen takes, bishop e3, castles, kings in the center, can't castle, knight d2. And it's a pretty rough game. Actually, I think he's losing on the spot right now. Like, how do you even defend this? Rook? So, there's a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble here. When it, with the queen h5 line, that's just a small insertion that, that makes a big difference. Insertion. So, okay, takes, um, check, yep. So let's go back here. And uh, knight f6. Knight f6 is the usual move here. There's a few ways to go. Now, nowadays, I'm looking more into the e5 one 
because after pawn takes this it gets kind of annoying and if the, the line that I'll never forget I was playing in a summer Swiss here in Michigan actually and um, I remember I was playing he was like 2150 or something and he went into a line that was straight draws and I was like well all right well this is a draw and I'm like bro I'm about to lose points on this game like this was a quick draw it'd be different if he was like 2500 then that's different but I didn't like this and this is what happened after pawn takes it was uh, I think he played bishop check after bishop check there's bishop d2 you also could do the pawn sack line not a big fan of the knight c3 one where you just sack the pawn I actually just play bishop d2 this is what I was taught now after bishop d2 there's a few ways you can play d5 you can play knight takes you can even play takes and takes and then d5 but he played the knight takes version which of course is very common I think it's the best move too after bishop takes knight takes now I take on f7 bishop takes king takes queen b3 check okay after queen b3 king f8 queen takes queen e7 I'm forced to trade because there's a discovery so after takes k takes and you got this position and honestly it's a straight up draw black and if you if you try to push which I did in the game I actually was losing at one point but you know it, you try to push it doesn't work and this is annoying this is extremely annoying if you want a quick draw cool go for this but if you don't want a quick draw especially if they lower rated if they're higher rated maybe go for this because you don't want complications you know it just depends but if they're lower rated or if they're if they're lower rated you have to go for the the, the more the different lines which I've actually looked at it in the database here just to see what games by the strongest players are here and what do they do in this position and most times they actually do this now you can't take this okay there's many lines that they after you take Bishop b4 the only one to watch out for honestly is the Knight takes c4 line but they do have this one takes takes d5 but at the same time if you're playing Bishop b2 is slightly a gamble because if, if I mean if they're higher rated then of course you can go for that gamble there but if they're lower rated you have the chance of them actually knowing this line and you going into a draw very quickly and you do have to like know your stuff which is just annoying to face that super drawn position which you might be on even on the bad end of the draw even though you have open files it's just you're on a bad end because you had that isolated pawn and he has no weaknesses so it's extremely hard to play that position now you do have this after knight takes there's castles castles rook to c1 um what happens bishop g4 is a move i like this or i like when they do this move after h3 there's bishop h5 and then after bishop h5 uh queen a4 actually Queen a4 sets up a nice little trap, so if they're not paying attention, queen d7, takes, takes, and then rook c5, and I've won many pieces this way, picking up a piece this in this manner. Going back to the position, though, again, like, they don't have to go for this at all. There's also another one where they take right now. And if you take this, I think you're in trouble. I used to do this. You get in trouble immediately. Rookie, rookie 8, you dropped a piece. Somehow I dropped a piece. Not good, right? Not good. You're actually supposed to play d5 in this one. Knight takes, queen takes, knight d6, and d6 with, before even castling. Because it just acts, it, it asks the question to black, how are you going to finish development? Yeah, they're up a pawn, but how are you going to finish development? This pawn's extremely weak. Rook d1's coming. And honestly, you sometimes even have attacking chances here. So pretty good for white. Different. Different. But the way the way that I see the play now and the, the better way and what the, the, the GMs do on chess base when you're looking into the database is e5 here right now e5 is a little bit different so now if they go d5 which is closer to mainline stuff bishop to b5 they have to move the knight either to e4 which they usually do or somewhere else but knight e4 pawn takes and it's a little bit different now a little bit different and it's more of a game it's more of a game for both sides it's it's literally equal you know if the engine if you look at the engine here engine says it's actually plus one they prefer white now it says 0.7 now when it thinks a little bit more it's 0.5 right so it's equal it's equal but i'd rather have an equal position with more pieces on the board than an equal position where like two rooks and a knight and some pawns versus two rooks and knight and some pawns when i'm not even on the good end of it as it feels like so this is the newer way of playing it now um but that's the bishop c5 line you usually will will face this especially if they know what they're doing a little bit more then of course they're going to play bishop c5 um, now knight f6 is the mainline standard stuff after knight f6 you go e5 and then after e5 there's d5 now i'm going to tell you a scotch gambit don't here do's and don'ts right this is one of the don'ts you never ampassant this pawn never ampassant it if you do you're going to be in a lot of trouble here i mean first do a piece count 
three, six, seven pawns versus six. So if you if you if you gambit a pawn, especially Scotch Gambit, right? We're gonna gambit the pawn for rapid development. We don't get rapid development. Why are we even doing it? Here, we're actually down in development. So it's not even good here. We let everything come out. We can't even take this without losing material. Bishop B4 check and lights out. Let's just get this off the screen. This is a family channel. So coming back to this, this is no good. So you have to move the bishop, bishop to b5, to pin here, and then we're going to take on d4. So after knight e4, knight takes d4, threatening to c6 knight. There's two ways to play. I've been seeing this one a lot lately. This is a very aggressive line, I would say, and tactical. If bishop c5, you just don't want to give this up. You don't want to give this f2 pawn up, and it gets kind of crazy. They're sacrificing like, hey, take my rook so I can mate you. That's basically what they're saying here. There's a lot of traps. So what I do is bishop to e3. Bishop e3 is the main line stuff. I actually just played this, I think, yesterday. But uh, castles, after castles, knight takes c6. So it's forcing. Remember, forcing moves are very good. Pawn takes, bishop takes c5, another forcing move. Knight takes c5, bishop takes c6, hitting the rook. Now, they have a, a rook sack line here, or an exchange sack. After bishop a6, if you know, you'll be in trouble sometimes if you take this rook immediately. I, I actually, I don't remember actually even what it is right now. Let me see if his bishop takes... Why is this wrong? Like, you're not supposed to take it right now. It's just queen g5, right? Yeah, queen g5, this is hanging. Queen d2, you can't get out the way. Your king is stuck in the center. And you see even the evaluation changes to minus one at this point. Minus one right now. Because you can get in trouble a lot in this line if you are not careful. And it's minus one and we took a rook. I'm not a fan of it. And I know I just never take it. So the move you're supposed to play is knight to c3. Is this in-between move? Actually, uh, bishop a6, knight c3. So now we're going to take this. And if they play d4, then we'll take the rook. That's usually how the line goes. It gets very complicated there too as well. Very, very complicated. Now, uh, they have another line here. This is a, a different different move order. It looks the same, but it's not the same. When they go bishop d7, they play bishop c5 and bishop d7. So it looks a little bit different here. Usually you would think you would castle and go back into the regular stuff or takes first and then castles and go into the regular stuff. But this bishop, because he played this first, it's a little bit different. You actually have to go knight d2 first before castling. So that's a little move order change that does happen. Now let's go to the main line stuff where I can show you after knight takes is bishop d7, then bishop takes and pawn takes. And then we castle. So now this is a little bit different. The bishop's still on f8, and him coming to c5 is just slightly different now. They also have c5, which if they go c5, you just move the knight out the way. Knight b3, not attacking this pawn, but I am attacking this one. A lot of people will hang this pawn, I will tell you that. If c4, queen takes d5, you take mine, I take yours, and I take the extra pawn with it. So uh, pretty good stuff there. But bishop to c oh, castles, and then bishop c5 is mainline stuff. After f3, there's knight g5. And like I said before in the last Scotch Gambit video, or one of the Scotch Gambit videos in the playlist, um, it was actually uh, bishop e3 is the updated Scotch Gambit. f4 is the old Scotch Gambit. And you can see my craziest Scotch Gambit I ever played. That video is in this playlist. But after f4, my buddy, what's up, bro? Dominique Myers played bishop g4, played a crazy move here, and I ended up winning the game, but the game was wild. He was trying to sack two rooks to mate me. It was insane insane right but i learned how to play against it now sometimes i'll still play f4 and i mean bishop e3 just gives you different positions in the scotch gambit but mo my nine times out of ten your opponent's not going to bishop g4 so f4 and bishop g4 is just it's just a weird move to make and trying to catch your opponent off guard because because you will be caught off guard if you're playing white and never saw bishop g4 you definitely gonna be caught off guard i promise you so um f4 94 though this is the usual this is what i i really prefer the f4 because i just have more experience there and then after knight to e4 bishop to e3 after castles, there's knight to d2. And then the idea here, guys, is just taking over to c5 square. We have nice pawn structure here. Your pawn structure tells you where you should where you should play. And honestly, we're going to play on the queen side over here for a little bit. And then we're going to shift gears and try to play f5, f6, if he allows us to. If knight takes, queen takes. And I'll show you guys briefly, just like we did in the other video with rook 2 f8 and that beautiful move I'll show you again. Knight to b3. Bishop b6, queen c3. And we're taking over the c5 square. This square is ours. So they'll go f6, knight c5, takes, takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook e8, hitting the e5 square. b4, I dare you to take the pawn. He's like, all right, I'll take it. You got to show me. Rook f8, whoa, and everything fell. You know, the water bottle flip, and then it drops, and everything flies everywhere. That's exactly what happened here. It's like a water bottle flip. Rook f8, check, and the game is over. If you take with the king, then his knight takes d7. Beautiful move. And if you take with the rook, his queen takes queen. Ouch. Start a new one, big fella. So going back here, 
um, that is that line of the Scotch Gambit here. But another line that you'll see quite often is actually Bishop E7. I don't like this one as much. Like, I'm not a big fan of it. I just play F3 first. And the reason why you don't go F4 is because you want this tempo on the knight so you can play F4. So it takes you two moves to make the, you know, to get to F4. But at the same time, it's just, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. But F3, knight to G5, F4. And if they ever go knight E6, they're in a lot of trouble, guys. Can you find a move here and why they're already in a lot of trouble here? The move here is actually F5. And now you're just powering through already. Knight takes d4, queen takes, castles, castling literally like almost right into me here. F6. I think F6 the move is the move. Let me just make sure, make sure the engine is not saying anything else. F6, g takes, takes, bishop d6, bishop h6. So well, rook e8. So here it is. Takes, takes. It just says here, bishop h6, automatic. Rook e1, how do we get here? Is there a way? Queen h4. Yeah, but he get, what about king h8? So let's try it. Queen h4, king h8. Mate in five. Oh, gross. Queen g5 and then bishop g7. No way out of that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so how about this? Queen g5, bishop f8. Yeah, how do you get out of this one? Oh, you just take it in the end. Check, takes, queen g7. Check, king g8, takes, queen g7. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, engine. Correct. Text quake. Yep, takes, queen g7, mate. Right. Okay. And f6 is just mating them. So, and, and, and like we said before, like you're supposed to be playing on the queen side, usually. But a lot of times they give you this chance to go this side of the board. And that's usually how it is, guys. I think that's most of the stuff you'll co we'll cover here in the Scotch Gambit. Of like what you'll be facing. And like after takes, takes. Of course, castles the move here. No matter what they do in this position, you're basically playing F3 and F4. Unless they play C5. There's really no other moves to surprise you here. F3, F4 is the usual. I have had Bishop C5, Bishop F4, Knight C5, F4, Knight E6. This one's different. Because now we're hitting this knight twice, but this is no good. I don't block with the bishop. I actually play c3. Then after castles, again, f5. Knight takes, pawn takes. Bishop here. I don't think the engine likes f6, and I used to play f6 a lot here. Let me see what the engine does. I used to love playing f6 here. Um, so it's plus 2.5. Best move. Yeah, see, f6 is number three here, but this is the most human move, right? f6. But the best move is bishop e3, rook e8, queen d2. It says queen h4, a4, a5. Yeah, see, that's a hard... This one just seems like you're mating white. I mean, you're mating black ASAP. But the, the best line given by the engine is bishop e3, rook e8, queen d2, queen h4, and then a4, which is one of the moves because you want to play a5. They go a5 themselves, and then it says knight c3. So honestly, just development here, which makes sense. And I've, I've had positions like this where a lot of times I'll go rook f4, hit the queen, bring the other rook over, bring this back, and then play rook g3. So it'll look like this. Let's say they not even, I don't even know what you do here is black. I'm going to just turn the engine off because this looks bad. This looks real bad for black. So what do you even do? Like you can't do anything. So like rook d8, right? Simple move, but it doesn't do anything. Rook f4, uh, maybe queen g5, or I don't even know. Queen e7 looks scary too. Queen g5, you can't really move this with discovery. So we're going to double the rooks, dub on the bub here. Rook f3 and rook g3 to put some more pressure here. King h8, probably he understands the heat's coming. Rook f3, queen got to go somewhere. Rook g3, and I'm already aiming. Or even rook h3 first, because that's another tempo. Queen g4, and then rook g3. And now I get here with tempo, so f6 is even stronger. g6, maybe bishop h6, and just bu bullying. I mean, straight up bully here. Straight up scotch gambit bully. Oh my goodness. You know, so that's exactly how this happens, guys. This is the Scotch Gambit Deep Dive. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now, make sure you check out the other videos in the playlist. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you haven't already. I really appreciate that. Watch the other video so we can get the watch time up. And put comments in the video if you need uh, anything. If you guys want to cover something else, something you want to cover. If you like today's video, if you're using the Scotch Gambit, you got any questions, comment in the video. Share this video. Like it. I really appreciate the love, guys. And I'll see you on the next video. We in here.